Good afternoon and welcome to the Run Up on Plus TV Africa. I am Maureen Menon Wezigwe. Earlier we had a repeat of the program, but coasting home we are live. And I, two days before the governorship and state assembly elections, candidates and political parties yesterday traded accusations of a plot to unleash violence and rig the exercise. The accusations and counter accusations were made as the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, commenced the distribution of election materials across the 774 local councils of the country. In Lagos, the ruling All Progressive Congress, that's the APC, the PDP, the People's Democratic Party, Labour Party, the LP, and Social Democratic Party, the SDP, were at one another's juggler over alleged plots to rig the elections. Well, joining us to discuss the race of the state elections and expectations for the polls is Kolawale Akinwale, candidate, House of Assembly, Ikeja Constituency 1. You're welcome to the program. Good afternoon, Maureen. Nice, nice to be here. All right. So you are running under the National Rescue Mission, NRM. But if I remember correctly, you supported the Labour Party during the presidential election. I did. Explain this to us. Well, uh, I've always been an, an obedient at heart. Uh, when you've lived in a country, you know, come from England where everything works, square pegs and square holes, you have to look at the, uh, you know, competency and capability of a person who puts himself forth for office. And I think that's an area where we've really struggled. Um, and I, I, you know, checked out Mr. Peter Obi a long time ago. It didn't take, it only took me less than half an hour to find out that this is the kind of man that should be taking us forward as far as the country is concerned. And yeah, I casted my, I casted my support for him. Okay, Absolutely. so how engaging has your campaign been? Well, you know, for a self-funding candidate in a very small party, I couldn't get into Labour, uh, although I've been a Labour candidate in Ikeja 1. Uh, but I've always uh, continued to push the narrative, I believe, uh, in good governance, I believe, in uh, an enabling environment, uh, even within the Kedja, uh, even as a House of Assembly person, um, all I have is oversight, looking at bills, and working with local government as well. But there's so much we can still do. Um, and what I've tried to do is to put myself out there. Um, you know, I'm probably the most visible uh, candidate um, in the Kedja. Um, uh, post as the win elections, I've been on a number of uh, media engagements, including something like this. Uh, I've tried to engage with the local community as well. My team have done an amazing job on Twitter. Uh, we're doing the best we can. We're on a shoestring budget. Someone told me I should bring 190 million uh, to run. I say 190 million. Are you serious? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. No wonder people get in uh, and then they spend their time doing nothing. As I told some people, I said, I could have come here, given you envelopes. You've been paid for four years. You can't come to me for anything because I've borrowed that money which is a stake, and I'm now going to have to get that back, which means the allocation that comes is not going to get used for projects to develop the environment. I'm going to be using that to, you know, pay back what I borrowed and also take some for myself because I now probably not be returned. Mm -hmm. But that cannot be the way to go. It's, uh, you know, in the countries I've lived in, uh, the government has tried to take, you know, to give 80, 90 percent to the people, you know, but here they've taken 90, 95 percent, and I don't know where the other 5 percent is. So we don't have that enabling environment. It's not the country I grew up in, despite being brought back from England at the age of six. You know, went to Ladylac, went to CMS Grammar School, as a senior prefect there, went to University of Lagos, and I served in 85, uh, you know, in Enugu. I turned 60 on Friday. I'm a 60-year-old man, IT consultant. What should I be doing in politics at this time? But you know what? I care enough about my people, and I feel that because we haven't had capable people in the driving seat, which is why the likes of Mr. Peter Obi and others have come into the frame. So, so say, there are new type of politicians on the block who said, you know what, well, we want our country back and we want to really contribute. All right. So what are those things in your constituency, Keja constituency one, that you think are lacking, that you think the person who represented or who is currently representing in the Ninth Assembly before the Tenth one is is not doing right that you want to fix? Thank you. Well, if you look at the welfare of, uh, you know, women, men, people with disability, youths, not much has been done to support them. I did mention before I came on the program, if you look at those who choose to go down the artisan routes, 
you know, they have not been well supported. So what happens at nine months, carpentry course, you find them dropping out after three months because they are struggling to get there. They haven't got any money to do that. But let's assume where we can actually provide some sort of support, you know, so you could call it pay as you train. So they would then be able to see through those nine months. They'll be definitely fully trained. And at the end of that, you said, okay, how much for your equipment? Maybe another soft loan of probably 100000 naira, but you don't have to actually give them the money. You can actually buy the equipment and hand it to them. Get them accountable as well. So there's so many ways. There's so much money, you would not believe it, Maureen, that's available to, to local government and available to, to us to actually utilize. Of course, I'm not an executive, but my plan is to work with uh, local government and say, look, guys, let's start giving back to them. Come on, over four years, you should be able to have a track record of projects, which is another thing that I do not see any visibility of. What are the projects that have been run in the Keja? Where are they at? Let's see visibility of them. Half, I'm a project manager. I'm an IT consultant, so that's what I do for a living. So I'm not going to be dressed like this. You know, we're going out there and say, okay, let's see those projects mm -hmm. in maybe shorts and trainers. Uh, and, and then let's say before we pay them, you know, it's milestone payment. So we get to this milestone, you examine on site what they've done, correct, suggest improvements. And then once they've done that, you pay them. By the next milestone, they should have taken those improvements forward. You know, it's what they do abroad, and I keep telling you, you know, the biggest challenge we have is a resource problem. Take the, take the guys that have run, you know, England, UK, China, Dubai, put them in here in about three to five years, they will turn this country to Dubai, UK, China, US, USA, and all those developed countries. Sorry to say this, but it's a fact. Take the governments that have run this country, put them in, in, in those Dubais. In nine months, they'll turn into Nigeria. But I also say this, uh, as I went to vote on the 25th, I was walking along with some young youths, just made friends with them. Mm. I said, look at our drains. Some people tipped their refuse into the drains, okay? And that's another area we have to deal with as well. I said, the government didn't do that. Mm. We did that. So there's a collective responsibility. I mean, look at this studio. so nice and clean because you've maintained it. If you didn't, you know, then it would not be the case. So there's that collective responsibility. But having said that, we have a refuse disposal agencies. What are they doing? Is the problem not having enough beans? Do we not have enough vehicles? Do we not have enough timelines for when we pick up those refuse? Do the people not know when it's going to be collected? And even if they are late, we don't have to because of that tip our refuse into the beans. Our gutters are not covered as well. You know, there's so much wrong. Look at the roads. You know, um, just basic health as well. Mm -hmm. There are no decent clinics. I could not believe in this country that people have to pay 10,000 naira or more just to complete a form. So whether you're ill or not, you, I mean, where I'm used, where I've come from, you walk in there, they take your details, and they start treating you. But here you have to buy oxygen, blood. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It cannot be right. All right. Well, politicians are known to talk in poetry and mm. walk in prose. Of course. Um, However, your, your principle, principally, your duty is to make laws. It will be if elected. Your mm -hmm. duty, principally, will be to make laws sure. uh, for peace, order, and good governance. But if elected, mm. would you sponsor a bill, you know, for local government autonomy? Yes, I would. I've always been a believer uh, in the fact that uh, you need to decentralize and empower. So, yes, I will definitely support that. Um, you know, I feel that although, I mean, look... It's not as if the local government are actually completely strong-armed at this time, Maureen. They're not. Mm -hmm. They've got enough autonomy to do what they need to do. They get allocations and they have responsibilities. But full autonomy, yes. But full autonomy with complete accountability is what I would definitely be pushing for. I'm supporting. Oversight function of mm -hmm. the legislature is, is not been... We, we, Nigerians can't say they really feel that. Mm -hmm oversight function of the legislative arm of government. Yes. What's, what's your take on that? Well, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, one of the key and core responsibilities of any, any legislator who knows what he should be, what he should be doing. Um, it, and I keep saying this. Um, unfortunately, we've made uh, politics and, and governance transactional rather than relational. My plan is, uh, you know, say, you know, a legislator, when and if I pray I'm elected, is to go into the corridors of power, you know, um, you know, engage and build relationships, but at the same time to work with the likes of the local government, you know, and say, look, guys, what can we do to start to deliver into the people in the Keja one? And what I've t t told the, those I've spoken to, I want Keja one to t challenge Keja two. So there's a healthy competition going on there because someone like myself is performing. I also add this I have no right to be there for four years if I am not delivering on, on my promises. 
And that, what I told uh, you know, the guys working with me is I said, look, we need to get a website up and running. They should, what we're doing there should be on that website. Mm -hmm. I also want to engage with the, you know, the, you know, my, my, uh, the people as well as often as possible. It could be once every two months or whatever. It is. We can have virtual calls. We can have physical calls. I don't mind them coming to a hall shouting at me and I'll say, well, guys, <laughs> you know, I want to do that. And I said this. I want you guys and media as well to be one of my best friends because if I can get something done, you know, I mean, one of what I promised, for example, was I said, you know, in Lagos, the non-Egyptians have, you know, who are, you know, supported me. I said, what would you do for us? And I said, well, they said they've been harassed and all that. And I said, what we can do is sponsor a non-Egyptians protection uh, bill. You know, it shouldn't be the case. You know, uh, the non-Egyptians remind me of the Asians in England. They're mm -hmm. very industrious, you know, and they do a lot of things that, you know, you and I wouldn't do. But then they equally have rights, you know, in the UK. They have rights in London. We should, you know, if you look at the Lagos, it's as cosmopolitan as it comes. It's all different. I'm not ethnic centric, for example, mm -hmm. but I believe that the rights of everybody should be protected. And if we have to push through a bill like that, then so would it be. And if I'm getting pushed back on it, then I have to come back to myself and let's explain why that is not getting true. All right. Well, the NRM, that's a national rescue mission. Does it have or did it have a presidential candidate during the election, uh, presidential election that took place in February? Uh, yes, it did. Mm -hmm. It did. All right. And then 40 seats to be filled in Lagos State. How many of your candidates do you have scattered around? Uh, not as many, uh, I'm afraid. Uh, it's, uh, look, I've, what I've found in my experience is that, um, you know, there are challenges in the small parties. Uh, they don't have funds. The structure is not as strong. And you also have fragments of the institution that's come down. So people drop down, they can't make it, it's all these big parties, and they keep rolling down. The governorship, um, uh, yeah. your governorship candidate, mm. uh, is he still running or has he uh, surrendered? Has he thrown in the towel and uh, adopted uh, someone? <laughs> um, as far as I am aware, as at this point in time, you know, my governorship candidate, and I think you mean Mr. Akin yes, uh, is still firmly in the race. All right. Well, there is the fear of apathy because of all that's happened during the February 25th election. People may be too scared to come out and vote. What do you say to an electorate watching right now? Well, I would say that, look, let's uh, first of all, on the 25th of February, I think the people spoke. Uh, by coming out and voting in mass. I think well over 60% of people never voted before. Uh, it's my first time I've voted in my country. I voted abroad. I was proud to do that. Uh, yes, the results uh, and, and what happened with INEC and all the Beaver scenario didn't quite say it's not what we wanted. It was a bit unpleasant. But I would say that let that not the us. Let's come out again. Let's vote in mass again. Let's speak. This is the only way. If we do not vote right, if we do not come out, what we've done is we've just enslaved ourselves for another four years. We are too much, we are too good for this. Uh, and we deserve better as Nigerians. We need an independent environment. We need people who know what they're doing to come out and uh, you know, start running the country and change the narrative. Oh, well, thank you so much, Kola, thank you, for pleasure. your time. Yeah. Kola Akinwale, candidate, House of Assembly, Keja Constituency 1, under the NRM, that's a National Rescue Mission, has been my guest. Thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you so much, Warren. Thank you. Wishing you the very best thank on you. Saturday. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, are we off air? We're still on <laughs> air. Well, I am Maureen Menong with you. Many thanks for your time. And do go out. Prepare to go out on Saturday and vote. It is your right. You must not be coward. You must not be scared out of fulfilling uh, your obligations to the country. Good day.